Ray Tracelink is here, but was it worth the wait? Well, let's talk about that, shall we? I, I remember the first time I heard the term Ray Tracelink. It was way back in the day. What, like 1999 or something? I had a subscription to some computer magazine. I don't know if it was PC Gamer or what. And they were saying there's this new type of rendering on the horizon and it's called ray tracing. I remember they showed a screenshot of an archway from a game and they had a regular shot where the archway was obviously made out of like a bunch of polygons and another screenshot that showed the archway rendered using ray tracing and the arch was completely smooth. And ray tracing wasn't just for rendering archways, it could also be used for lighting and shadows and reflections. Wow, so exciting. I couldn't wait for it to be implemented in games. That was 20 years ago. I've been very patient going through many generations of non-ray trace games, and we're only just now, at long last, finally getting our hands on some actual ray traced video game graphics. So, has it been worth the wait? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we'll decide if it's even worth your time and money in its current state. Because while, yes, we have graphics cards that are built around ray tracing, and yes, we finally have a pretty broad adoption of ray tracing built into many modern game engines, as we'll see in a bit, well, let's just say that the ray tracing revolution is still taking its time to take the world by storm. But first, what is ray tracing anyways? Oh, I'm glad you asked. The short version is that ray tracing is a lifelike way of rendering objects, light, and shadow in video games. There's two main components to ray tracing. There is the camera tracing objects in a scene, which is the view ray, and light sources tracing the paths of light beams to create areas of light and shadow within the rendering, which is called the shadow ray. If you picture a camera behind a pixel grid and imagine it shooting out little rays that hit objects in the virtual scene. It shoots out one ray per pixel on your screen, so after each pixel of each ray is calculated, you have your image. This is how the camera traces the objects of the scene and flattens them into a 2D image that we can see. The second component, the shadow ray, that's the same thing. Lights shooting beam and hitting things, but instead of it being used to render the image for us, these are actual light sources in scenes that illuminate objects that create shadows in the scene that exist independent of the camera. All of this is a complicated way of saying that, in theory, the lighting can be more realistic. I say in theory because it's, it's not so cut and dry. Because until now, graphics hardware could handle complicated lighting and rendering techniques like ray tracing. But gamers are always hungry for more realistic feeling lighting and shadows. So game engines and designers have found a thousand and one tricks that they could use to create the appearance of real light and shadow and reflections without needing to rely on computationally intensive ray tracing techniques. This is called rasterization, which means that the vector data, such as the path that the light takes as it moves through a scene and hits objects, is flattened into a 2D light and shadow map. This is great because having a single 2D image for the shadow of something is much less demanding to render than having to calculate the path of light beams in real time, frame after frame for every object in the game world. This 2D pre-rendered light and shadow technique, rasterization, is how games have traditionally made scenes have lighting and reflections that are realistic and believable without needing to trace any rays. And with good reason, because ray tracing uses way more computational power to calculate than simple 2D shadow and reflection maps projected onto the game world. And even though we have GPUs that can finally, finally tackle rendering real-time ray traced lights and shadows, it's not without a cost. The power that's needed is still way more than the traditional way of doing things, and since we've been relying on rasterization for creating realistic scenes for so long, we've gotten really good at it and at much less of a computational cost to render. So now we're sort of stuck between two eras. The era of rasterization, where, where we've already figured out a ton of tricks and techniques to make scenes look amazing and run on modest hardware, and the era of ray tracing, where we're only now in the early days of hardware accelerated ray trace lighting effects that can only be used on very high-end hardware. And even then, there's a significant performance penalty. So, is it worth it? Ray tracing's amazing, it hits the future, and we have hardware that can do it now, but RTX cards are expensive, even not considering the 
inflation and supply issues and scalpers and miners and predatory marketplace practices that make getting your hands on any graphics card feel like the GPU hunger games. Even if we consider these new 20 and 30 series RTX graphics cards at their elusive MSRP, any way you look at it, RTX tech is expensive. Not just in terms of actual dollars, but in terms of performance. There's a huge trade-off that you're paying to click that little RTX enabled box in your game settings. So, at long last, we've come to the point of the video. Is it worth it? Well, let's answer that together right now, shall we? Okay, let's get into this. Our test rig is going to be using this RTX 3080 in my system with a Ryzen 7 5800X and a X570 motherboard, 32 gigabytes of 3600 MHz RAM, and a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Uh, full specs are listed in the description below. We're going to be looking at ray tracing in three games. We'll consider how the game looks with ray tracing off, and then with ray tracing on, We'll consider if RTX looks a lot better, or just a little better, or about the same, or even worse. And we'll consider the performance penalty of enabling ray tracing effects before deciding if ray tracing is even worth it. Starting off with my favorite game to benchmark, and one of my favorite games in general, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let's look at how the game looks with traditional rendering techniques, without RTX. We're running at 1440p for all these tests, by the way. The game is set to ultra settings and we're getting an average of 136 FPS. And it looks pretty darn good. The shadows are detailed where you can see the shape of the leaves from the trees and they feel pretty realistic to me. The lighting feels thick and dense like you're in a hot jungle. Those subtle reflections in the water, they nailed it. This is the sort of amazing visuals we've come to expect from AAA titles using traditional rendering methods. Let's enable ray tracing and this is what we're gonna get. We take a 40% FPS cut and end up with 88 FPS average. Well, what about the visuals? The shadows are, are much softer, no more detail from the leaves or anything. It's all much more diffused and it's smushy. And is the lighting more realistic? Is this more accurate to how the sun would hit leaves in the trees and cast a soft shadow? I don't know, to be honest. Now, I'm not one to yuck your yum. If you think this looks way better, then that's cool. No judgment. But, but for me, I think this looks worse than the original. I don't care if it's technically more realistic. For me, when I see vague, soft shadows, it doesn't feel better to me. It feels like I'm losing detail. Shadows in real life can be soft, no question, but looking at these two scenes side by side, I I've made up my mind which I'd rather have. But even if they look the same, or even if ray tracing was a bit better, look at that performance hit. We lose 40% of FPS in the ray trace seed. So you tell me, how much better does the ray trace seed look? Is it 40% better? You know my opinion, but I, I'd like to know yours. Let me know in the comments. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider seed, ray tracing, is it 40% better? Do you think it's worth the trade-off? And these trade-offs are even less impactful when the game is in motion. When you're actually playing the game, do you even notice the RTX shadows or reflections or lighting when the old rasterization method still looks good? You know that I think the non-RTX version looks better, but even if you like the RTX version more, I think it's a hard sell to say you're willing to sacrifice 40% of your FPS when you can barely notice it when you're actually playing the game. Now, before we go further, I'd like to address the DLSS elephant in the room. DLSS upscales images, and it makes your games run faster without much of a visual downgrade, Yes, DLSS exists. Yes, RTX cards also have DLSS. And yes, D DLSS can make up for most of the sacrifice that you make by choosing ray tracing. But, and this is a big but, DLSS isn't just for ray tracing. You could use DLSS to boost your performance even without ray tracing. So it's not really a part of the discussion about whether you should pay more for our ray tracing. Maybe you want an RTX card for DLSS. That's a great reason to want an RTX card. I personally love DLSS, and I think the best part of RTX cards isn't ray tracing, but DLSS. However, it's not going to be a deciding factor in this discussion, which is about ray tracing specifically. Okay, I don't think we can make a judgment call based on one game alone, since different games handle it differently, at different engines and C types and whatever. So let's try again. Battlefield 5, running at 1440p, ultra settings, with RTX off, we're gonna get 143 FPS average. In this game, the RTX is just for use for reflections, I think, so take a good look at how the reflections in the puddle looks, and the detail on the gun, 
there's pretty much no reflection on the gun. Doesn't look shiny. So here we are, default. Not bad, right? A and here it is with RTX on. Well, yeah, the reflection of the puddle is better, probably. And there's now a bit of reflection near the side of the gun, you can see there. It looks pretty good, but like, we went from 143 FPS down to 73 FPS. That, that's just about half. Does the game look twice as good with some extra shiny puddles? Because you're sacrificing half your frame rate to get them. Uh, here they are side by side. How much better does it look to you? I gotta say the RTX version is, I, d I don't know, 5% better. And that's generous. I'd allow a 5% performance hit to have my game look like the one on the right versus the one on the left. But look at the performance difference. For half the FPS, the game barely looks any different. It certainly doesn't look twice as good to justify getting half the FPS, and then you have to think about how the game looks and feels while you're playing. If I black out the FPS at the top, video A, can you tell which version this is? RTX or not RTX? What about video B? RTX or not? Is it a big difference going from this to this? Does A look twice as better or worse than a B? The only difference I see is the FPS. A is our non-RTX footage and it performs way better than B. It's a huge difference in performance, if you ask me, for, for like no difference in the visuals. Again, this is my opinion. I, I wish I loved the RTX reflections more than I do, because I spent a lot to get them. But get real here, I I'm generally quite disappointed in the ray tracing so far, to be honest. But maybe our last game will save us. This is Cyberjug 2077. Here it is running at 1440p with ultra settings, no RTX, averaging 67 FPS. And it looks great. Look at the lighting and the shadows and reflections. Surely this is a game that'll have a huge difference once we turn on that sweet, sweet RTX, right? And this is a brand new game full of RTX features, shadows, reflections, everything. It looks like it should handle ray tracing amazing because, you know, there's wet sidewalks with reflections and many light sources and the developers at NVIDIA were happy to toot their own horn about how big of a deal RTX is in this game. So let's see for ourselves. Here you go, RTX on. Do you notice a difference? Yeah, I sort of do, a bit. I mean, it looks a bit different, but is it way better? I guess the lighting and the shadows have a slightly uh, different look to them. Maybe the reflections. I wouldn't say it's mind-blowingly realistic compared to the non-RTX version though. And we, we go from 67 FPS down to 41 FPS. That's a 40% loss in FPS. A and yeah, even side by side. Yeah, the RTX version looks a tiny bit different, but I don't think it looks better necessarily, just a little different. They both look great. They're equally impressive in my opinion. Maybe my preference would lead towards the RTX version, but not if I have to sacrifice 40% of the FPS. They both look great, especially in motion. Again, can, can you even tell which version this is? And if I switch, is this, is this way better? Or are they about the same? I, I just don't care either way. They both look equally great when you're playing, in my opinion. The only difference in my preference is that one of them runs at 40% more FPS. I'd way rather have the FPS than the ray trace shadows and reflections. Am I wrong? Am I just being cynical or jaded? It just doesn't impress me, visually. I don't think RTX makes games look much different at all, especially when you're actually playing them. Yeah, there are small areas where you'll catch a reflection or a super realistic shadow if you're really looking for them, but it adds just so little to the game. And honestly, when I'm playing this or any other RTX game, the only difference I actually notice are the massive drops in FPS when switching on that RTX button. So? Should you spend extra to get an RTX card? Well, if you ask me, the answer is a big fat yes. Wait, what? Yeah, you should. If you can find one and afford one, but not for ray tracing, for DLSS. DLSS is much more impressive technology in my opinion. DLSS bridges the gap between ray traced and non ray traced performance with very little visual downgrade and can give you some crazy FPS numbers if you don't enable ray tracing. It can let you play games at 4K on like a 3060 for crying out loud. Maybe ray tracing will be much more impressive in the future, but for now, the real legacy of RTX tech isn't ray tracing, but it's DLSS. I'm gonna be doing an entire video on DLSS, how it's different from FSR, which is better, when to use one or the other, all that stuff. So get subscribed so you don't miss it. But 
While I personally have no problem playing games at medium settings on lower end hardware and having a great time, I do think the power and performance and extra features like DLSS make the entire RTX lineup a pretty compelling choice. That's if you can find and afford one, of course. But if you're curious about this whole ray tracing revolution and feel like maybe you're missing out on something great and you're wondering if it's worth your money, no. No, it's not. Not even close. In my opinion, of course. And that brings us to the end. Please let me know in the comments below. The, the ray tracing tax, the cost of the RTX lineup and the performance hit, are they worth it in your opinion? I'm, I'm super curious to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or the thumbs down button if you didn't like it for some reason. Share this video with anyone you think would enjoy it. Subscribe for more videos like this. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye